This is the final video for um, voltaic cells, um, or at least this is the final video for relating thermodynamic parameters to cell potentials. Um, the next couple of videos we're going to look at after this one are going to look at uh, doing um, elect are going to look more at electrolytic cells and how we um, interpret what's going on with stoichiometry in these electrochemical reactions. But for now, um, we what we've been working up to, and in the last video I kind of recaptured and resummarized a lot of how delta G is related to all these different observables. Um, this one is going to look at how we can take. And a reaction that's not at equilibrium, right? Um, a reaction that has, instead of the values of the concentrations being having a little e beneath them, they're going to have a random set of concentrations that's not necessarily at equilibrium, and how we can correct the cell potential for those non-equilibrium conditions. So this was the equation that we went over in chapter 18 for that. We said that, well, we can take our delta G, which is a corrected delta G for non-equilibrium conditions. So this delta G is at not at equilibrium or not necessarily at equilibrium. And then we can take the equilibrium delta G and we can correct it by using the uh, reaction quotient. So this equation was, we basically said, well, we could take our, our base, which is the delta G at, at under standard conditions and at equilibrium, and then we could correct it for differences in the concentration or in the temperature by using this RT ln Q term, and then we can get a, kind of a delta G at whatever the temperature or concentrations were we have at that time. So we know that delta G is equal to minus NFE um, from the last couple of videos we've had. So let's start to substitute in things. So for the left side here, because this is delta G not with a naught, we're going to type in, we're going to plug in minus NFE, but we're going to not plug in the E with the naught. We're going to plug in E, which is at conditions other than standard conditions. So this is the E that could be at a different temperature or at a different set of concentrations. Then for the delta G naught, we're going to type in minus NFE with the naught. Now this is at 25 degrees Celsius and uses the standard reduction potentials. So this is the one that we've been using all along because um, we can look these up in that table and come up with it and this is when we have 25 degrees Celsius everything is at one molar um, so we're under standard conditions. And then we're going to correct that by having our RT ln Q which doesn't change. That's going to stay the same. So now what we could do is we could divide both sides by minus NFE. I'm sorry, not by NFE, by minus NF. And we get the following. We get E, because the NF goes away, is equal to E naught. And then um, we have to flip the sign here because we're dividing by a minus. So we're going to get minus RT over NF ln Q. And this is the so-called Nernst equation. Uh, this this equation is um, famous in electrochemistry, and it allows you to do a lot of really important things. Um, actually, I use this in my research all the time because we are looking for how to correct um, our reference potentials. Basically, we use a reference electrode, um, and when it's not under standard conditions, we use this equation all the time to uh, figure out what the correction factor should be for that reference. So just like we did in the last video where we had um, where we were figuring out K, uh, we can use a couple of things to convert this. So since this, since typically the temperature will remain the same, so if we say the temperature is at 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin, um, we have R is equal to 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. We have F, which is equal to 96,485 coulombs per mole and we convert the natural log to the log base 10, we can get a new equation, which is E is equal to E naught minus 0 0.0592 over N times the log of Q. So the caveat for this is that this must be at 25 degrees Celsius. Whereas this general equation can be at any temperature um, that you want. 
So the general equation E equals E naught minus RT over NF, this has all the variables still left, so you can change the temperature and still get an, basically a new correction factor for that, that temperature, um, and then you can have any Q you want. With E equals E naught minus 0 0.0592 over N log Q, this equation assumes that you're at 25 degrees Celsius. That's the one assumption that you have to have for the second equation. So it's up to you which one you want to use. But generally speaking, a lot of these reactions are performed at room temperature, which is very close to 25 degrees Celsius. And that thus, this one tends to be the one that, that people use. Now, let me explain why we convert to log. So um, why do we convert to log base 10? So this is a classic thing. If you look, the units, and I, I didn't say this in the last video, but I'm going to say it now. The units of this are in volts. This 0 0.0592 has units of volts, which makes sense because we're subtracting E, which is a cell potential that has units of volts, and we're correcting this, so this must have units of volts. So basically what's, what happens in this, and the reason why we use log base 10 um, for these, is let's say that we have a concentration, a standard concentration of one molar, and this is going to give us E cell. Well, if we decrease this concentration to 0 0.1 molar, which might be a very common thing, you might go from one molar to 0.1 molar um, just because your experiment calls for that. Just like in the pH scale, when you take the log of this, you're going from the log of 0 to the log of 1. So if you take the log of 1 and you take the log of 0.1, this is going to give you 0 and this is going to give you 1. So this makes sense. Under standard conditions where we take the log of 1, remember, under standard conditions, everything should be at 1 molar. We get a 0 from the log, and therefore this gives us a 0 correction factor, and this consolidates from E, e, e to e, e, e equals E naught. So when the log is one molar, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, um, a, the log comes out to be zero and we get E equals E naught. As we go away from those standard conditions, let's say we reduce our concentration to 0.1 molar, now we do get a value for the log. And we're going to compensate, and this is going to give us a positive compensation factor. Well, not a positive compensation factor. It's going to give us a compensation factor. If it's one, it's going to be minus 0.0592. Um, since the log of, of uh, the point 0.1 would be 1. So we would, we would take E minus 0 0.0592, and we would get a corrected factor. So the old rule is that you get 60 millivolts per what we call per decade, where the 60 comes from the fact that 0 0.0592 is approximately 60 millivolts, right? If you convert this to millivolts, you get 59.2 millivolts here as the correction factor. So just like in the pH scale, when we change this thing by one, uh, by, by a factor of 10, we get a factor of one change in the log. And then we can say that, well, it's 60 millivolts um, per every one order of magnitude change in the log. So this 60 millivolts per decade is important because it's a quick way of estimating. If I make an acidic solution at 0.1 molar, I know that I'm going to have to uh, correct my reference electrode by 60 millivolts um, because of this Nernst equation. So that's why I wanted to point that out. You don't need to know the why we convert to log base 10 stuff. You just need to know the equations and what's going on with them. But I thought it was important that I kind of share with you why we do that so that you have an idea. Lecture problem 10 um, uses the Nernst equation as we, as we discussed it. So it says, what is the cell potential for the following voltaic cell at 25 degrees Celsius? So since I'm at 25 degrees Celsius, I'm going to write down my Nernst equation as E equals E naught minus 0 0.0592 divided by N times the log of Q. So now we have a variety of things that we have to do in order to, to get this, this cell potential. So one thing that we have to identify is whether or not we need to use whether or not we can just use the standard reduction potentials to get this, or we can't. So what you'll notice is that we can't, because the concentrations here, these are not at one molar. So we definitely, this, this means that we're going to have to use the Nernst equation. So that's what you're looking for. So if those, if those concentrations were one molar, you can just go right to the standard reduction potentials, get the E cell using E of the cathode minus E of the anode, and you would be good. But because these are not at one molar, we have to use the Nernst equation. So let's start working through some parts of this problem. The first thing we have to do is we have to get E naught. 
Um, and we're going to do some standard steps to do that. So in this problem, we have to first write our reaction. So we have to kind of go through this cell notation and start to pick that apart. So the left side is going to be our anode. So zinc is going to go to zinc 2 plus, plus 2 electrons. That's our anode. And then our cathode, which is on the right, is going to be silver plus, plus 1 electron goes to silver. So to balance this out charge-wise, I know I'm going to have to multiply that by a 2. So we, got, we get a couple of things from this. We, we're going to get N, which is equal to 2. And we can get E cell by looking up the standard reduction potentials um, for these two half cells. So if you do that, uh, you're going to get 0 0.80 volts for the silver minus negative 0 0.76 volts for the zinc. So we get E cell equal to 1.56 volts. Now the reason why we need this is because this is up here as E naught for the cell. So we, we now have E naught, we have N, and we get that from dissecting the equation, um, figuring out how many electrons are transferred and calculating E cell. Now we got to write an expression for Q that's for this. So we can now write that E is equal to 1.56 volts minus 0 0.0592 over N, which is equal to 2. And now we got to plug in for a log of Q what our Q is for this reaction. So it may help you to write the overall reaction here. So what we're going to have for an overall reaction is that we have zinc solid plus 2 Ag plus aqueous. Remember, I have to multiply this side by 2. Gives zinc 2 plus aqueous plus silver solid. And so if I wanted to write out my Q for this, it's going to be the products, which is going to be the zinc 2 plus concentration over the reactants, which is going to be the silver plus concentration, and that's going to get a square because of the stoichiometry. So we can plug that in. E is equal to 1.56 volts minus 0 0.0592 over 2 time. Oh, um, and then this over here, I'm sorry. So this is going to be the zinc 2 plus concentration divided by the silver plus concentration squared. And now we can plug in those concentrations that we have to start. So our zinc was 0 0.200 molar, and our silver was 0 0.00200 molar, which we're going to square. So if you calculate that all out, if you do the division here of 0.2 divided by 0 0.002 squared, take the log of it, and then multiply that by the 0 0.0592 over 2, and then subtract this entire term from 1.56, you get a cell potential of 1.42 volts. Now, let's just, an important thing to think about is, is well, okay, what direction will the cell, should the cell potential go depending on how you change the concentrations? So we're gonna make a little box down here and we're just gonna think about this real quick to make sure that we're all on the same page with this. So under standard conditions, uh, the concentrations should equal one molar. If that were the case, and we plugged one molar into the log of Q, we would get the log of one molar divided by one molar squared. And this would give us the log of one, which would be zero. So in this case, E would equal E naught. So that would be under standard conditions. Now let's look at what happens as we change the relative concentrations, because this is important. So if the case, let's take the, log, let's take the case where the concentration of the products is greater than the concentration of the reactants. And then we have the case also where we have the concentration of the reactants is greater than the concentration of the products. So in the case where you have that the concentration of the, um, the products is greater than the reactants, this is going to give us a log that is greater than 1. Um, because we're going to have a large number on top and a small number on the bottom. So this is going to give us something that's um, larger than one. And the effect of this is going to be that we're going to get an output number from this that's positive. So this is going to lead us to a lower cell potential 
because if we get a positive output from the log, then the voltage minus that positive output is going to give us a lower cell potential. In the other hand, if we get a log is less than one, the output is going to be a negative, which is going to give us a higher cell potential. So what's going to happen there is if we were to flip this around and we were to have um, more, uh, we were to have more silver than zinc, then this is going to give us a higher cell potential because we're going to get a negative out of that log, and then a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. And this this should make sense to you, right? So in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, if we have more reactants than we have products, that's going to push the reaction in the forward direction and make it more spontaneous. So in this case, the reaction becomes more spontaneous. In the case where we have more products than reactants, the reaction is going to become less spontaneous because it's going to want to go in the reverse direction. So this, this all fits with Le Chatelier's principle and thinking about um, how relative concentrations of products and reactants will affect the reaction is important. So I wanted to point that out because this makes sense. The fact that we get a slightly lower cell potential is consistent with the fact that we have more products than we have reactants, which pushes it in the reverse direction, making it a little less spontaneous than it would be if everything were at one molar.